All right, so what we're going to do next is we're going to use enable control painting inside of our UV master menu. And what that's going to do is going to determine the areas that we want to protect from any UV splitting. And then we are going to attract areas in the back of our model, for example, where we want ZBrush to give us a split on the UV map. So I'm going to start all over. Let me go to texture map make sure that I don't have a texture map. I'm going to go to my UV map and I'm going to delete the UVs that I have right now. Make sure there are no UVs. I'm going to go to the clone and I'm going to go to the sub tool of the clone and click on delete. So I'm going to get rid of that clone and we're going to start from the very beginning. So you can see how easy it is to create UVs inside of ZBrush. Again, we're going to work on a clone. Here's our clone. Now, when I go to unwrap, you will notice that this new clone has poly groups assigned to it. So if I go to flatten, notice that our UVs have been laid out exactly the same way as before, but now they're colorized. These are the colors for our poly groups. So let me go back to unflatten. And I want you to see what happens when we use the enable control painting. Enable control painting has three buttons, protect, attract, and erase. These three buttons have a specific color. So if I click on protect, notice that in our main color, the color is red. You do not have to select this color. Do not change this color. Let ZBrush use this red color to figure out what areas have been protected. And for the attract, notice that the color is now blue. ZBrush will look at this color to see which ones are the areas that it can use to cut the UV map. Erase is white, which is the color of our clone. So we're going to start with protect. So we're going to go to color, fill object. I have this button assigned right here in my custom UI. And now the entire mesh is protected. This will not work because ZBrush will not know where to put a seam and it's just going to put a seam wherever it feels like it. We have to attract ZBrush into specific areas and we're going to use the attract button select the attract button it turns blue and I'm gonna make my brush really small and I'm gonna get rid of the focal shift and I'm going to paint in the back of the head because I want ZBrush to look at that one seam in the middle and I'm going to paint this seam right here all the way to the top make sure that you don't paint too much on the left or the right if not, ZBrush will take advantage of that and give you weird cuts. Now I'm going to create a seam right here in the back because I want ZBrush to look at this edge right here and give us a cut for the bottom of the base. Now I'm going to leave the front right here, right? So it'll be like a hinge from this part to this part. And I'm going to go around and attract those areas for ZBrush to cut. Now careful with these extra little paint jobs that we do, all right? Use the protect to erase it. The reason why I'm not using erase is because erase is white. That is the color of our clone. So in this case, I'm using the red to erase and I'm gonna attract a little bit more of the forehead now what we're going to do next is we're going to unwrap this and we are going to flatten to see what kind of uvs zbrush gave us and as you can see we got pretty good uvs all right and if you want to see where the seams are there's a button right here called check seams and what we're going to do next is we're going to copy our uvs and we're going to go to the original mesh and now we can paste our UVs. If we go to our UV map, notice that our delete UVs and our morph UV buttons are back. And we can again go to our texture map and do a create new from polypaint. And there we have our newly created texture map.